Oh, oh hey there. Don't mind me, I'm just uh, typing on my typewriter over here. Um, I actually wasn't typing on my typewriter, but soon at some point I probably will as an experiment just to see what it's like working with a typewriter. Uh, but I'm not doing that now. What I'm going to show you now and do right now is simply this. Um, and once again, thanks to my amazing and beautiful life partner for uh, shooting this video with a big smile on her face and she laughs the entire time because, well, I found someone in this world that actually thinks I'm funny. And that is the number one objective that every single person in this life should actually strive for. Just kidding, but seriously. Okay, so <laughs> what, what I'm actually gonna show you today is simply this. In some of my uh, comments, and every single one of the comments on my channel, I review and check out and read and pay attention to and take very seriously. And one of the comments I got was uh, for, from someone wanting to see and go through the process of precisely how I go through um, taking notes from the point of taking notes to actually installing them in my anti-net. Now, I, I like to use the, the term installing in my anti-net because I feel like it's what you're doing in this phase when you've taken notes and then install those notes in your anti-net is you're kind of installing it in your brain. Uh, Lumen used to call this process filing. Like, oh, he spent, in, in fact, uh, he, is, uh, he is stated and he has written that he f spends more time in his anti-net filing than he does actually writing books. So I'm going to show you the actual process of how I figure out where to install and file uh, my cards, aka my thoughts. And so swing over to the, my desk, I'm just going to give you like an over the shoulder shot of, um, of this process. So let me just show you, this is my little arsenal over here, okay? And what I like to do is I like to spend at least two hours uh, do, doing reading. And I have this simple little block that allows me to time myself. And so today I went through about 30 minutes. So I just hit that 30 minutes and a 30 minute little clock counts down. Now what I do during this process is I read. And what I'm reading right now is uh, a book called Nicholas Lumen Shortcuts. It's available only in German. However, I am a crazy mofo and have paid an amazing uh, person, a translator, who's familiar with Lumen stuff to actually translate it into English. And so what I'm doing right now and what I've done today for 30 minutes is read. And while I read, I took notes. Now, in a, one of my other videos, a different video, I talk about the different types of notes there are. And you can see that there are different types of notes here. And we'll go into detail on that uh, at a later video or later point, um, or you can just watch the other video where I talk about the three types of notes. Now, at the end of 30 minutes, I am left with these notes, okay? And I'm gonna go through them here, or at least not all of them, but we'll sh I'll give you some examples, okay? So here is the first one. I'm gonna show you how I actually go through the process process of installing this in my anti-net. So this note reads, Lumen himself actually brings forth the idea that not everything ought to be easy to understand. Uh, quote, should everything that is said be equally forced under the rod of comprehensibility? Uh, quote, comprehensibility without effort, understandable without any preparation, without any time, thinking, and deciphering. So, um, what Lumen means by this is that he is often criticized. If you ever read one of Nicholas Lumen's books, it is one of the most painful experiences you'll have in your life. It is extremely dense, compact, and challenging to read. Uh, it forces you, and it seems quite incomprehensible. And what he's saying here is that why should everything be so comprehensible? Should I make it comprehensible to the public? Should I make it comprehensible to anyone that has uh, basically not, um, not done any thinking for themselves? And so what this reminds me of, this card, is another section that I read about, about 
how a lot of people get started in uh, using a Zettelkasten or writing um, and wanting to start an anti-net and they don't actually and aren't familiar with what Lumen actually produced, what type of work he produced. And the type of work he produced was very challenging. It was very hard to read. And so what I'm doing right now is when I'm, when I'm, when I've created this card, I'm thinking in my mind and I'm working my mind and my memory and recalling what this reminds me of. And that process, it's called neuroassociative recall. I'm basically exercising my mind and trying to figure out and associate what this thought is associated with. And I'm also recalling the other thoughts. And this whole process that happens does not so easily happen in a digital note-taking app where you can just search everything. Um, what an anti-net does and what a analog and a physical thinking system does, it forces you to have this, this cycle going on in your mind, what's going on in my mind right now, which is, okay, what does this remind me of? Oh, it reminds me of this memory. Where would this memory, where would this thought be stored? And so that's what's going on in my head right now. So what I'm thinking of and what I said is I'm thinking of um, how I have this section and I've been working on it in my book about how what Lumen wrote and how he wrote was extremely, well, incomprehensible. It was challenging. And there were reasons that he made his texts and his work so challenging. And one reason was, uh, is that he was quite frankly, a Nazi. And so there was a lot of a negative stigma about him, him and his ideas. He was a constrip conscripted child Nazi soldier, you know, so when he was 15, he was basically forced into serving the Nazi army um, at the time. So he it wasn't like he uh, elected to actually serve the Nazis and was a big ideologue and believed in their cause. But the fact of the matter is, is that he was a former Nazi. And so uh, a lot of what he did and how he wrote, and he made it very incomprehensible for the general public to almost protect his life. And the reason why he wanted to protect his life is because what he was saying in his theories and his research was that he doesn't believe in that, um, you know, societies should be structured in a certain way where he actually believed that, yes, democracy is good, but he also said that we need a, um, a component in society. We also need the polar opposite because two poles, two polar systems actually are better for, uh, basically for um, the evolution and progress of ideas. But you can't really say that if you are, well, a Nazi. The time was a former Nazi because the time uh, in uh, the academic German period at the time, it was very, very sensitive. So if anyone, any of the general public caught wind of what you were saying, if any of the general um, basically population could comprehend what you're saying, you're basically your career and your life was at risk. You'd be thrown under the bus and labeled a Nazi. Lumen did not want to be cast under that label. So he on purpose made his text very incomprehensible. He wanted to only target the learned best thinkers. So that thought that I just spouted out to you off the top of my head is neuro imprinted in my mind because I've written that by hand. And so I know it. And so what I'm doing right now is the neuroassociative recall task of like linking this to that thought. Now that I have that thought, all I have to do is figure out where in my anti-net it goes. And so now the question is, that's going through my mind is, okay, well, where did I actually file that whole line of thinking that Lumen was hard to understand and there was, it was a really good reason that he was hard to understand. Well, I filed it in uh, my why even getting started with the Zettelkasten section. And so what I'm gonna do is show you that right now and how I find it. Now, swing over here for a second. I have this section, this is kind of like a secondary index and this is basically what I'm working off of in writing my book. And so in my book, I have basically, what's the point? Why a book on Zettelkasten? And so I think that it is in this section of what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate over to 4214 slash 0B. So follow me. Here's over here is 
the section in my anti-net, you can see down here is section 4000 to 4215. 4, and so 4214 slash 0B, all I have to do is navigate over to it. Slash zero, slash zero. So after the zeros are broken down and branched down, this is the tree-like structure, there's going to be a zero B. So there's zero AB, okay? So I'm getting closer. And now, here I am, that's zero B zero, is zero B, okay? So I'm getting closer. As you can see, this process is not. And so what I'm doing right now is now that I'm in the area, I'm basically navigating around and re-reviewing a lot of my old thoughts. This process in human memory is called maintenance rehearsal. So I'm refreshing on all of the ideas that I previously written. And this is fun because I'm going through this process of well, I'm going through this process of exercising my mind and then re-injecting all these other ideas inside of my short-term memory so that I can like later recall them. It creates something called reverberation in the mind. Um, and you come up with surprises. So as I'm going through this, I care, I think, because seeing faces, fixed ideas. Okay, most of virtue is painfully cleared by Lumen. So what I then go back to do Why a book on Zettelkasten? So it's not in 4214 slash 0B. So what I've just basically done, and this is what you have to do a lot when you're basically using the anti-net type system, is you're like, okay, well, I didn't really find it, but I got refreshed on this section again. So let me think again. And then you basically revamp and re-exercise your basically your neuroassociative recall muscle to be like, okay, where else could it be? And you start to think and get back into the certain patterns in which you initially thought. So, for instance, like now I'm going through my original, this is like my emergent index. So, I then go, why? Oh yeah, okay. So then, why Lumen started his anti-net in the first place? Here's another one. And then, okay, let's start around here. Why Lumen started his anti-net in the first place? Okay. And then there's also right around here, from what I remember, let's see. Yeah, so let's go right here, okay. Why Lumen started his anti-net in the first place? Negative one slash three slash two. Down, down. Yes, and this is right where it is. So the primary goal of the Zettelkasten. And so what you get to is like this section. Yes. No, the point of the Zettelkasten and the anti-net is not to create genius level work so thereby you can sound like a pompous, pretentious, academic ass. I wrote that. Rather, it's to get out all of your crazy, otherworldly, complex thoughts uh, into your anti-net, thereby enables your books to serve as a more friendly, simple reminder to your work. This has another benefit, however. It leaves you with a wealth of material that compounds and turns you into a publication machine, quote. So,
So now we're getting even closer, right around this area. Why is it even important to start a, uh, an anti-net? Why even concern yourself with... One reason is that amongst... Is one producer... Oh, and here's where we're really getting into it. Yes. Well, I found it. Yes. You see how I was talking about in post-Nazi Germany, the academic community for Germany sought to distance itself from the extreme conservatism and adopt more liberal, radical, and idealistic openness to social movements. Yet blind adoption. So this whole area talking about essentially demonized. Yep, one group scholars analyzed. So this whole section, 1AE, 1AF, while Lumen's writing style was profoundly academic, it was almost a requirement for one to be taken seriously as a scholar. So what I'm going to then do is here's, I found the section finally, and thanks for bearing with me. And really who I'm thinking for bearing with me is my partner who has to get some work done right after this video, but we're almost done. So Lumen's writing in Zettelkasten is not the primary culprit with which such a dry, pretentious academic writing, you know, happened. So what, what I'm doing is, so as you can see, yes, Lumen Zettelkasten is not the primary culprit, right? That said, the writing style did help ensure only academics proficient in this style would be capable of even attempting to understand his work. So now I've found the card that I want to put it behind. So 4214 slash negative 1 slash 1A slash 1G. I'll get into this negative 1 stuff later. Just, just don't try to understand that now if it's too complex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to branch it down. So I've got two options. One option is I can just add it as 1 H, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, so 1 H. The other option is I can add it down and do 4214 slash negative 1 slash 1 A slash 1 G dash 1. And that's called branching down or stemming down the thought. And so what I'm going to do right now is just stem down on this thought. So I'm going to basically file this, this card, like Lumen himself actually brings forth the idea that not everything ought to be easy to understand in the first place. This expands this thought, right? And it adds its own reference. This is the shortcuts book, page six, okay, that I've added it to. So 4214, it's pretty simple. 4214 slash negative one slash 1A slash 1G slash one. And that's it. Then I take that, pack it right here, file it, and then that's it. And so this entire process, what I've done is I've related it, I've worked out my mind and also reviewed all of these other cards related to it and refreshed. And when you do that, when you're on this search, this quest, it's actually a lot of fun. In psych psychologically, in psychological res uh, research, the process of trying to find an associative idea has actually been shown as, and I'll show a reference in my book, but it's been shown as a cure for depression. And so... I swear to God, yeah, my uh, my uh, doctorate in training candidate um, partner behind me is like raising an eyebrow right now, uh, questioning me. But I swear to God, and I have it right here in the search in the search section. Uh, well, I mean, I'll need to see this. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's in there. It's in there. It's in there. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not just making it up. Um, and. Uh, I swear to God. So that's another thing is like when you use a digital note taking app, you're basically missing that whole process of working out your mind and the search and expanding your, your knowledge base. So anyway, um, that is it. I've taken you through a real life behind the scenes look at working with your antinet, installing it. I kind of chose a pretty difficult card because 
I didn't do this with any pre-planned intention of like making it easy. You saw a real life example. It takes a little, little bit of time to actually install your thoughts sometimes into your anti-net. So anyway, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for staying tuned and paying attention in this video. And man, I'm doing this all for you. I should be just writing my book right now, but I've really enjoyed all of your comments and feedback. And if you have any more feedback or ideas for any new uh, videos, please leave them in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, blah, 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 all that stuff. Peace and love, everybody.